back to another episode of Junkie with Junior. Working on Old Blue, gotta get this dog ready to race. I don't know if you can tell by the sound in that video, but one of the things that we're gonna have to do is swap out the torque converter in this truck. Just got a stock one in there and I thought it would have been okay, but you know, with the gear ratio and tire size and camshaft, it kills the stall speed a little bit. So we just need to get this truck taken off a little better. So we're gonna put a higher stall speed torque converter in here and see if we can get this thing to really launch off the line a lot better. Uh, Cause in the past when I've raced this truck, that's where I've really uh, been beat is on the initial takeoff. Cause we have to start from a dead stop on the racetrack and uh, it just really takes, you know, a good straightaway for this truck to get going on the circle track. And uh, we gotta get that tightened right. We're gonna win some races. Gotta have this thing dialed in. So let's get this thing in the shot and get the transmission out, get a new converter in it. See if we can make this thing take off a little better. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce to you Old Blue. It was my daily C20 before uh, you know I got rear-ended on the way home and truck got totaled and said, you know what, let's make a race truck out of it. So that's what we do. We run up at Citrus County Speedway and uh, the only event we're gonna do this time is a chain race, but we've done the boat and trailer race before. Uh, that one's kind of a mess and I don't have a boat and trailer this time, so we're just gonna do the chain race. But gotta get this thing dialed in. We got it up on our two post lift here. We'll get some jack stands under the back end. And uh, then we know it's not gonna roll anywhere. We can get the brakes adjusted up on this thing and uh, get it dialed in and ready to rip some laps. So here we are underneath Old Blue. Gonna get this drive shaft out of the way first. Figure out what we gotta do with the exhaust. We got a rigged up hanger back here. Uh, might be able to get this cross member out and leave the exhaust in place and just slide the transmission back. And it actually might work in our favor because then we can put the mount or the tail housing uh, on the exhaust here and just let it sit to help support it so it's not such a sketchy situation pulling this transmission back to get that converter out. And uh, we'll start disconnecting some of this stuff and make some progress. And Well, we made quite the mess on the brand new concrete floors. Uh, got it broken right. Don't have to worry about that concrete rusting now because there's plenty of ATF all over it. Uh, I knew it was going to be a disaster. You try to catch as much fluid as you can, but it's just not possible. It's going to make a mess. If you had it on a real lift where you had a transmission jack, you can really make some stuff happen. But when you're doing it on your back with the floor jack, it's not the easiest thing. Not a fun process. Wasn't looking forward to that at all. But we won so far. The old converter is out. Pretty stout, big old unit here. Going with a little bit smaller. Gonna get a lot better stall speed out of this one. Uh, hopefully get us that you know better takeoff that we're looking for. So we're gonna pour some fluid in this converter uh, so it's not a dry start. And reverse that miserable process of putting all this stuff back together. It be, shouldn't be as messy because all the fluid is out now. So that'll make life a little bit easier. And go ahead and get this thing back together and get it all buttoned back up. So the hard part's done. Transmission's back in the truck. Uh, loosely, we've only got a couple bolts holding it in now. Got to tighten them all up, get all the bell housing bolted in, get our torque converter bolted up, hook our lines up, hook up the, put the dipstick back in the transmission, bolt that up, drive shaft, all that sort of little stuff, put our starter back on. Gonna get all this uh, tightened up and uh, done and over with, and it'll be time to go for a little test drive. Can't wait to see how much better this thing's gonna do with a little higher stall speed converter in it. Should help it out quite a bit. Let's get this thing finished up and we'll go for a test drive and find out. Nothing's easy. Just when I thought we were cruising, getting this thing back together, uh, I get the bell housing bolts all snugged up and I go to pull the tor torque converter forward into the pilot uh, to get it engaged there and lined up so I can put the bolts in. Uh, we run into a snag. It won't go all the way up 
flush with the flex plate here so I knew if we would try to put bolts in it it would pull the flex plate back and everything would be out of whack so when something doesn't line up you have to know when to stop and figure out what's going on so this crankshaft spacer here uh, extender whatever you want to call it uh, it goes on the back of the crank sandwiches the flex plate there and it gives this extended pilot for the torque converter to engage into worked fine on the old converter but the problem is this new converter has a really short step and it bottoms out on this face here so rather than pull the torque converter back out because that's a really cumbersome process by myself out here um, you know because the transmission has to go so much further back I figured I would just unbolt everything slide it as far back as I can and let the jack stand hold it all up and unbolt this crankshaft spacer so while everything was still bolted up I tried to measure the gap between the torque converter ear and the flex plate and it was actually the thickness of my 15 millimeter wrench because I couldn't really get anything in here to measure so I just stuck a wrench up in there till I found one that fit snug so I knew what distance I'd be working with when I took it apart oddly enough when I got this unbolted and was holding it in my hand it's hard to tell here but there is a really fine step machined on the outside of this spacer here turns out this thickness the the thickness from the step to the end is the same as that 15 millimeter wrench that I was working with so for some odd reason I'm gonna have to machine this off here and this is just one of those weird deals of putting a traditional Chevy transmission behind a 700 R4 uh, with a performance converter everything worked before nothing was bound up it was perfect but now we're gonna have to machine this little spacer down so I'm gonna run this dude down to the shop throw it in the lathe trim that off I mean my uh, lack of patience really wants me to just hit it with a grinder and knock all that off there but I want it to be tight and right so I'll take it to work with me tomorrow uh, put it in the lathe trim it down and then we can get this thing put back together uh, throughout the weeknights after work so I took our spacer slash pilot relocator down to the shop and cut it down in the lathe today at work I uh, got it nice and slim and trim, still enough there to uh, pilot the torque converter so we don't have to worry about it being misaligned. Now we get to go through the fun and cumbersome process of getting this thing torqued back in place uh, with the transmission still being installed in the torque converter. Everything slid back, but there's not a lot of room to work with. So I'm going to get in uh, there and wrestle with that. Picked up some ARP bolts from the shop as well because the new converter doesn't have bolts welded onto it. So we're going to need bolts and nuts. So hopefully we can get all this stuff torqued down and get this truck back together now. All right, so the torque converter is not bolted up yet, but it's a good sign here because the torque converter is sitting flat against the flex plate as it should, and it's not bound up. We can slide it back. I did put a little bit of anti-seize on that pilot, so in the future, if there's ever, you know, tried to be any corrosion, you don't have to worry about it sticking in there. Um, but now the converter moves back and forth into that pilot nice and free like it should, and it still stays engaged in the transmission because the splines are really long. So now we can carry on with bolting up the torque converter and putting our drive shaft back in. Well, I thought we were really close to getting this truck buttoned up, but these ARP bolts that I grabbed off the shelf today, uh, your local idiot grabbed the wrong ones. These are a 7 16 bolt, not a 3 8 So when I'm trying to stick it through this way, it doesn't come through. And I thought, man, why does this not line up? The old converter matched up to these holes. So then I thought to bring it around here and try and stick it in the converter itself, and it doesn't go through. Well, guess what? When it's all together, there's no way to drill that. So. Back to the shop, let me grab some more bolts tomorrow and hopefully we can button up this project again tomorrow night. You know what this means, we're getting really close. Get her all topped off with some fluid, make sure it's not bleeding it all right back out underneath on the ground. Let that run down the tube so we can check it in a second. No massive puddles under the truck. So far, so good. Converter is nice and sturdy like it should be. Bolts look like they're doing their job. Front seal's not leaking out of the pump, so I guess we did something right down here. And we got one little problem tonight. 
Here's the problem. The one night that I'm finally ready to go on a test drive, it decides to actually rain in Florida, so it's not like a desert out here anymore. Very thankful for the rain though. We definitely need it down here. Everything's really crispy and fire risk is really high right now. So we're gonna set this truck, uh, let it sit in the shop tonight and tomorrow, maybe if it's not raining, we'll get to go for a little test drive and see how that torque converter works. Time has finally come. Of course, it rained right after I got home from work. So we've got a wet road to test drive the truck on, but we really need to test drive this thing just to make sure that the converter is gonna be okay for this race we got coming up. Wet roads, definitely not uh, any traction in our favor, but we're just gonna take it out for an easy drive. Uh, you know, probably lay on the pedal a little bit and just see how this thing responds. Definitely not gonna hook up, but we can see what it's gonna do. Oh boy, does this truck bring, bring back some memories. I really love driving this truck, even though it's a clapped out race machine and uh, definitely not street legal anymore. It still puts a smile on my face. As you know, I just love a square body and uh, that's why I didn't let this one go to the junkyard. I had to get it back from the insurance company when it got totaled. And uh, I just, I like it. It's my old blue, you can't go wrong. But it, like even right now, we're cruising along. I don't know how fast we're going. I don't have a tag, we have a speedo. But we're clipping along pretty good and it just drives so smooth. Ah, it's a shame it's not street legal anymore because I'd be daily in this thing all the time. Love it. So we're gonna bring it down to a stop here because this road's actually a little bit dry where these trees had blocked some of the rain from hitting the road and just see what it does from a dead stop because in the race we do have to take off from a dead stop just like this and before it would always try to push through uh the brakes you know the converter was engaged at such a low rpm so let's see how it does here get a little rpms oh man what a difference i couldn't even hold it like that before now dang what a difference and that's just putting it in drive we're not actually running out the gears, manually shifting it, so big difference. Can't wait to get this thing on the track and see what it actually does. All right, so we're on this road behind my house and I found a dry stretch actually where it didn't rain here, but it did rain at my house. So we're going to pull our super duper shifter manually down in first gear and see how this thing does. We're gonna try to run it through uh, first and into second and see how this thing reacts. Gosh dang, it's like a whole nother truck having this different converter in here. Man, I'm really stoked now. I can't wait to get this thing on the track next weekend. It uh, definitely feels doubt in, but it's racing. Anything can happen. A lot of luck's involved on this deal. And remember, we're gonna have the Ford Focus behind this truck because we're only entering in the chain race this time. So I've got engine and the Focus behind me, whoever's riding in it, uh, is only gonna have brakes. They can't have the engine running at all. And we gotta drag them around the track can't break the chain uh, so you know there's definitely some finesse involved in this race as crude as it sounds but that'll be coming up next week stay tuned thanks for watching junk Road junior hope you enjoyed the episode remember to give us a thumbs up like the channel subscribe and we will see you next time